Greetings, my name is Jerry Hahn and I'm with Purdue University Sirius and I'm going to be hosting this half of the breakout sessions today for the for the Purdue faculty research talks. Uh, since this is a smaller room, uh, we're more in a um, meeting format than we are in a um, seminar or webinar format. So that should allow us to uh, handle the Q&A, you know, quite simply and, and uh, get through this, uh, get this very easily. It's my pleasure to introduce Professor Shashui Mo. He completed his PhD in electrical engineering at Yale University in 2014. Then he worked as a postdoc at MIT for a year. In July of 2015, he joined the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics at Purdue University as an assistant professor. His research interests in, include multi-agent networks, autonomy, cybersecurity, optimizations, control, and applications of AI. He is interested in both theoretical research towards novel control algorithms for coordination among a large network of mobile agents and experimental implementations for improving autonomy and intelligence of the overall network system. So we're delighted uh, to have Xiao Shui here. He is also a member of our research leadership board advising us at Sirius. And with that, I will turn it over to Xiao Shui. Thank you, Jerry. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Xiao Shuaimo, and uh, today uh, we are talking about uh, resilience for autonomous and connected systems. Uh, so first, uh, uh, can everybody hear me clearly? I believe so. Right? Uh, okay. So um, let's see. First, a little bit, of, a little bit of motivation. Uh, what do, do we mean by autonomous and connected systems? So by ACS, it means a group of autonomous systems which can work together as a cohesive whole by competition, coordination, and collaboration among usually nearby neighbor agents. So actually this autonomous and connected systems is usually also called multi-agent systems. The advantages of uh, ACS or multi-agent systems is that they have better autonomy and robustness in terms of that losing one or two agents or losing one or two autonomous systems does not matter. And, and on and the network is connected. And also they have uh, a lot of flexibility, but especially by reconfiguration their formation among them. And also by gathering together and they could achieve swarm intelligence and can solve more sophisticated formations that are well beyond of the capability of, of individual system or individual agents. So there are a lot of uh, um, app engineer applications. First, for example, a group of aircraft for formation flight or utilization, uh, a swarm of drones for monitoring a large area. Or you can envision the future, the future battlefield. There will be uh, a group, a bunch of drones and a bunch of ground vehicles which can assist human soldiers to win the battle. And for multi-agent systems, you know, if we look at the autonomous kind of systems or multi-agent systems, in individual agent level, so each autonomous agent is usually mobile and autonomous. That means without any human input or human control, and it's usually low cost, for example, in a swarm of drones. Each drone could cost a low end, for example, $40. And if you look at the multi-agent system in the group level, and it features include the whole multi-agent system is usually in large scale and also heterogeneous. It usually consists of different types of air vehicles and ground vehicles. And also there are typically communication constraints to the information flow or coordination flow across the whole network, across the whole multi-agent system. <laughs> All these features um, have pre-crewed the application of centralized control and gives rise to the development of digital algorithms for control optimization and coordination in multi-agent systems. By distributed, we mean the whole multi-agent systems and the group level will achieve global objectives, such as exploration of the unknown formation flight, cooperative with sensing search and rescue by only local coordination among nearby neighbor agents. Because of the Tissue algorithms, so there is a dependence of the uh, global objectives on, on only local coordination. And this makes actually multi-agent systems 
to be inherently robust against an individual agent or communication failure. For example, in one agent fail or the communica one communication links does not work, it, it's usually not matter for the group level as long as the, the underlying network is connected. On the other hand, this such dependence is also with a major cybersecurity concern. And uh, this makes the whole multi-agent systems inherently vulnerable to cyber attacks, even in the presence of one malicious agent. Because once the cyber attackers controlled one of the autonomous agents, it could manipulate the whole multi-agent systems if the whole group has no security protection. So this gives rise to the topic today is what we call resilient autonomy for multi-agent systems. It's not just autonomous and a connected system, but we want to achieve the resilience feature to this system. By resilience, it means a system ability to prepare for and plan for, or observe, or recover from, or more successfully to adverse events. So you may ask, you know, what is special for multi-agent system? What are special for the resilience for multi-agent systems? There are, are actually several research challenges one need to address to achieve resilience for multi-agent system. First, as we have identified, and each agent is usually low cost. And each agent is usually with limited sensing and processing capability. And also each agent here can only achieve local information or can only communicate with its nearby neighbors. But on the other hand, the cyber attackers could be highly mobile. For example, if we consider the connected and the autonomous vehicles, for example, the platoon of trucks. So all these vehicles are usually high mobile and it could be sophisticated. So our system could be equipped with AI. So the cyber attackers could also be equipped with the advanced AI and the learning algorithm. It, it may fully control actually each individual agent and they could send bad information to mislead the other agent while pretending to be a good one. And also since you know, our multi, uh, autonomous and connected systems usually works in an open environment and uh, it consists of a large number of agents. So cyber attackers could launch their cyber attacks massively from multiple locations. And also, there are the, whenever it comes to the multi-agent systems, you, there are usually underlying network constraints to the communications. And such network is usually time varying. For example, one robot, one vehicle could join the autonomous and connected system at time t, and then could leave at maybe after after a few time steps. This leads to a time varying topology among their communications. Such time varying networks actually could lead to very difficult uh, analysis in control and optimization among such multi-agent systems. So all of this motivates us to develop techniques for resilience in multi-agent systems and to be first automated and uh, adaptive to time varying networks and uh, mobile malicious agents. And also they could work in a fully distributed scenario because the multi-agent system usually consists a large number of agents and usually there is no centralized control. So, so all this motivated our outline of our talk today. So we will talk about how to achieve resilience for multi-agent consensus and how to achieve a resilience for multi-agent formation control and how to achieve resilience for multi-agent optimization and learning. So these three are actually uh, some of our recent, uh, our project uh, related to cybersecurity and resilience and the most recent three years. Uh, we, after these three uh, parts, we will also talk about the possibility of integration of uh, human input into safety or resilience, which is actually our ongoing uh, research work. So first, let's look at what do we mean by resilience, achieving resilience from multi-agent consensus. You may ask, what is consensus? So consensus means all agents in the platform reach agreement on same quantity of interest. Such physical quantity could be velocity. For example, all the birds fly in the same direction. Or could be a decision variable. 
And for example, uh, you know, all the zones make a decision saying that, okay, we will go to uh, east, go east to find maybe uh, food, find more like a more sensitive information. Or all the clocks of the computers are synchronized. That, that means all the computers in this multi agent system reach agreement on the global time. Consensus is a key enabler for actually for all agents to work on the cohesive whole. Uh, any questions? So it actually consensus is a, is a key enabler for our, all agents to work on the cohesive whole. And here is an example. From this example, you can see that actually the, uh, uh, all these birds reach agreement, uh, reach a consensus on their speed and uh, heading direction. So they are fully synchronized. And this actually, uh, the consensus plays a central role in the coordination of this multi-agent system. If you look at each bird and the autonomous agent. And actually there's a very, fam uh, there a very popular paper and by Stephen Morse and it's on consensus. I think it published in 2003 and has been already cited uh, on more than 8,000 uh, times. So from this, you can also see the concept of consensus is popular well in autonomous electronic systems and actually a, a very important uh, concept. And today we're, t you know, for there are a lot of uh, digital algorithms for achieving consensus, but they usually works well only under ideal condition and fails even for simple tasks in the present presence of only one malicious agent. For example, for this, if all agents want to gather together into uh, the same location, that's called a multi-agent rendezvous problem. It also consensus application. In ideal case, all the agents will convert to be the same point and by actually using the, uh, uh, update their directions by using the, uh, the nearby neighbor rule. But if there is one agent, even one agent becomes malicious, and if it, it input the periodic signal, it will mislead the whole group. There are most existing cybersecurity things usually based on attacks identification, more than identify which one is the bad guy and then isolate it, or attack mitigation using the discrepancy between agent states, more to check you know, which one is the most different state uh, for, my, for myself and my neighbor. I mean, you know, if it's the if state is far away from my neighbors, then usually it's a bad one because all our goal is to reach a multi-agent consensus. But for attack identifications, it usually is uh, very hard to be applied to multi-agent system because each agent only has local information and uh, each agent is usually with low cost. It's very hard for agent to identify which one is banned from only local information. And also for, from the discrepancy, and uh, such discrepancy sometimes could result from agents' legitimate uh, change. Means this, you know, this discrepancy is desired, but by this kind of algorithm for cybersecurity, it may misclassified uh, uh, attacks. So in this, uh, in our most recent research, we considered the internal mode principle-based attack. First, it's very sophisticated attack. It could incorporate agent's natural mode into design of its attack signal. It could destabilize the whole multi-agent system. And it could also bypass each infinity controller's attenuation. And also, you know, it can pretend to be a good one it's very well. It could make its local number of errors to be zero. It's hard to use uh, the agent's discrepancy to identify which one is bad, equipped by this MP attack. For example, this is a five node network. If we have a leader and all agents want to reach a consensus and uh, agent two, suppose agent two is under IMP attack. You can see that agent two's uh, magnitude is significantly larger than others. But if you check each agent's local neighbor's error, so its error, it's around zero. So this type of attack is very sophisticated and could bypass the H-infinity controller attenuation. So 
we more like propose a method based on combination of H infinity control, which is the typical method for uh, attenuate disturbance, and also plus reinforcement learning. And also, we also insert this kind of trust evaluation mechanism. I mean, each agent will maintain a value or estimation which represent its own trust to the its nearby neighbors. And this is actually the figure, the key idea of uh, the proposed method. And we, we more introduce the observer to compare estimated states and actual states. And I will also introduce the bounded IL2 gain to mitigate the influence of disturbance. This is actually many is this literature also utilize this method for robustness. And we also reformulated the H infinity tracking control and the zero sum game and uh, find the optimal solution by reinforcement learning. And also, we also incorporate a confidence value and a trust value there. And here's the solution result. And you can see that although agent two is under separate attack, so its magnitude is significantly larger than others, but all the other ratio consensus. And this actually, uh, one uh, of my PhD work, uh, he's uh, tried to formulate writing this as a journal paper. And uh, then we talk about another topic, multi-agent formation control. First, what do we mean by what do we mean by multi-agent formation control? In all the agents maintain a desired geometric shape by a desired distance maintained between each pair of the agents. For example, if we want to achieve a triangular formation, the three distances will be maintained among these agents. So this is an, actually a video for multi-agent formation control. Just flew with the Breitling jet team. I'm here with Paco, who was flying me around. I was in the back there. And you know, when we're really close, but 10 feet from each other, right? 10 feet? Yeah, we're about 10 feet from each other. That's right. Okay. We are enduring between four and five Gs, which is four to five times the gravity of forces. Now, when we're really close together. You know, there's a lot of news about self driving cars that they have like LIDAR and radar, <laughs> cameras for anti collision. Do we have any anti-collision stuff in these planes? Yeah, we've got a very big one. What it's it? the brain. <laughs> it's just you in there? Yeah. <laughs> so everyone else is just looking at their instruments? Yeah, it's your skills, your eyes, your detection of how far are you. It's just thanks to our experience, we can manage to fly. Uh, from this video, you can see that actually, there, this is the four agent formation, more like four aircraft. And also, and they said, actually, the distance between each pair of the agents is fixed. And also there, of course, is a, is a human pilot controls the distance to serve actually as a controller. When we, can, when we consider a large formation, a multi-agent formation, we usually, there is a very popular method called gradient descent-based digital formation control. And it, it's, uh, it, it's uh, you can refer to uh, uh, Professor Francis' paper in 2009, and this, gradient descent based uh, formation control could uh, stabilize or control all 2D rigid formations. And they have the uh, proof of exponential stability there. But actually when there's no adversary, you can see that actually this three agent formation could be, uh, the shape of this three agent formation could be maintained. But when there is one attack to even one agent, for I think this is a attack to agent three, it, it could mislead the whole formation control. And actually this gives the requirement of the resilient controller need to attenuate impact of the adversaries and also be adaptive to dynamic attacks. And also, you know, each agent cannot utilize global information because in controlling our, uh, a large formation consisting of a large number of agents or aircraft or, or drones, so each drone has no global information. And also, we also consider the uh, anniversary uh, to be uh, in the worst case scenario, and while the anniversary aim to ma maximize the cost to go and agent into compensate as the input to minimize it. It's also, we consider this as a zero sum game. The challenge here is then the resulted uh, hamilton jacob equation and usually yields optimal values but it uh, doesn't allow a uh, direct or analytical solution there. And uh, the, our proposed method is also we introduced uh, the actor critical reform learning 
and uh, more like combine this with the grid, existing grid in decent control. And we use the policy situation to find a solution to zero sum game and actors here to, uh, to implement policies to achieve their objective and critic or just evaluate whether your policy is good or not. And by the interaction between critic and actors and the whole system goal is reached. Of course here, actor and critic, though we are all approximated by the neural networks. And also the, uh, this is our simulation result for the three agents formation. And even agent three, there is uh, a tax to agent three, but uh, the, whole, uh, the whole formation is still maintained. And uh, the whole formation will be achieved and in you know, the desired shape. And also the AdWords service uh, impact are, act are actually attenuated. And also we also checked actually when you apply the cyber tax to one, two, three periodically, and also the, this controller still works. Of course, this is also only for three agent formation, which is complete graph. And we actually did also submission to validate the proposal algorithm by a formation of 31 zones. Um, there's two windows. The left window is, uh, is a formation control and, and uh, uh, without our controller. And on the right hand side is the uh, distributed formation control based on this learning based controller. And actually, the 31 zones will form a shape of, of P, of the letter P, and you can see. For case one, there's no attacks to the original formation control and to the learning based uh, formation control. No attacks. So both this control could achieve a desired formation. And, uh, but a little bit, the learning based control uh, converge a little bit slower because it's uh, an algorithm more complicated. It introduces a learning based algorithm to enhance its cybersecurity. Also, finally, the converge. And then there are the tags. And you can, and later on, you can see that actually the, from the, the, the control and left hand side were never be able to stabilize the whole formation while the proposed one works. And the, I believe the number of agents under several attacks is more than 20 here we applied. You can see, you know, the right hand side already reached a formation, but uh, the uh, at the left hand side, the original district control does not work. It will just oscillate there. And then let's enter our the third part, that's formation control. For multi-agent optimization and learning, we also have done some work to achieve resilience there. So first I want to introduce a very fundamental and a general problem for optimization learning in multi-agent systems. So given a multi-agent system, and here we use a, a graph to represent its information flow. So each direct edge represents the, uh, the information is sent from one node to, to the other node. And for each agent i, we suppose that it controls a state xit and also a cost of function fi. And the goal for the whole multi-agent systems is to minimize the sum of the cost of function subject to each xi is uh, in a, in a lies in some constraints and also all the uh, states need to reach a consensus. For each xit here, you could consider, you know, if each xit could be the speed and acceleration and fi could be their gas cost. For example, in a platoon of trucks, all the trucks need to communicate each other, coordinate with each other, such to adjust their speed to be the same and while minimizing the sum of their gas cost. So this is a very fundamental problem actually which can be applied in many other problems too. For them, a bunch of zones and to synchronize their speed and to find a decision variable on their acceleration or their state and to minimize the overall gas cost of the whole network. Of course, this XIT could also represent the parameter estimation to policy in reinforcement learning and FI here could represent a reward function uh, 
the agent receives from the environment. And of course, if applied into the, uh, if we, we want to uh, utilize a bunch of zones for monitoring the area, and XIT here could be the uh, sensor location, uh, and FI here could be the reward also, which be uh, the area of monitoring. So I, there are many, many algorithms. Actually, this is called digital optimization and learning. Lisa Richard, there are many uh, papers there and uh, propose many algorithms to solve this uh, uh, very fundamental problem. And uh, they all work very ideally, but if there is the one agent marked in red and to input, inject some bad information to agent I, and actually the whole multi-agent optimization learning algorithm usually will fail. It usually will oscillate and it will never reach a consensus value to solve the, the fundamental problem. And then the question naturally arises, how should we achieve resilience in this case? Especially in this way. So we look at, you know, the original algorithm, consensus-based digital algorithm. And uh, it usually, it all, usually all, most of the algorithm are based in this form. It just updates its state to be the uh, nonlinear function of its uh, uh, the, uh, uh, average of its nearby neighbors. So this VI here is just uh, nothing, it's just uh, uh, average of my neighbor's states. If there is a one a malicious agent input uh, connect to agent I, it will inject information from malicious agents. This will cause the failure of this consensus based digital optimization learning. Then the natural question is how to ex exclude malicious information even without knowing, what, knowing which one is malicious. For example, even for agent I, it has several neighbors, and, but it, each agent is very weak here, has local information and low cost. It cannot distinguish or cannot identify which one is bad. If identification is solution, if, if, identif if, if identification is, uh, accept, is available, then we just identify the malicious agents and isolate it. But it's usually very challenging in a fully digital scenario. Uh, and also, I can give you an example that majority of rules also don't work. For example, agent I here has four neighbors, one, two, three, four. And it, suppose agent I knows at the most one of them is malicious. How to just determine which one is malicious? You may say, let's do the majority rule. If we do the majority rule, the agent one will be uh, excluded. But actually, when there are no constraints for unconstrained consensus, it will be fine. But when there is constraints, especially for multi-agent optimization and learning, this mechanism you will not work. You are ex your mechanism will the majority rule will ex will usually will probably exclude some normal agents that exclude the malicious one. So we want to achieve, you know, all the reason why this uh, cyber attackers could have caused failure of multi-agent optimization of learning. It's actually, one, once there's a bad agent, and average to each agent will become bad. So we want to achieve some, what we call a resilient average, which is always the weighted average of normal agent state. But it could be achieved only based on local information, and plus a little bit of knowledge about it, uh, for example, the number, the upper bound of the number of malicious agents nearby. That's done, that's all we need. And uh, we don't need to identify which one is bad, but we can still achieve this uh, resilient average. And the key idea is uh, this. So we will utilize the idea of intersection of convex halls. For example, we have five pieces of information, XI and its four nearby neighbors. DI here denotes the number of information. And uh, suppose we know at most one of them is malicious. So we will list all the subset of this MI with size four, and then we'll choose a vector, not a direct average, but in, in the intersection of this convex hull. We could prove that this actually is always a, a resilient average. Uh, advantage of using this is that although we give up the simple average, we choose the more sophisticated ones, but this could guarantee that all the information, or the field information VI bar is always a good information and it could automatically eliminate the impact of malicious one. So we have done some simulations on multi agent optimization and learning, and we can consider time varying networks, bad anti attacks, time varying locations, and also only 
local information available. You can see then, okay, the red dot mark represent a malicious agent and the underlying topology is changing. The location of the mobile agent, mobile malicious agent is also changing. And actually we could still guarantee by using this kind of mechanism, we could still guarantee a consensus is reached to solve the multi-agent learning and optimization problem. Actually, these are the, uh, you could also refer to the following paper for more details. So these are the three uh, research projects we have done before about uh, resilience for multi-agent systems, which we have talked about uh, basic consensus, formation control, and multi-agent optimization and learning. And then you may ask, you know, what's next or what's in future? Uh, or you may ask, you know, since we're human beings, perhaps is the most resilient against cyber attacks because we don't have any software here. And we are also sometimes also human, human operators have its own expertise and experience to, to tell whether a uh, system is under cyber attack or not. And so our, uh, we have our ongoing work to uh, investigate how to integrate a human input into safe autonomy. Although not resilience one, but uh, we, I want to introduce this work to motivate, you know, to see in future, we also want to use develop similar techniques to achieve resilient autonomy for a uh, for, uh, multi-agent system from human input. So this actually, before introducing the human input, we want to you know, go back to autonomy. You know, how to design controllers for uh, autonomous vehicles. So usually one of the uh, key enablers, en enablers is called optimal control. It could enable systems to autonomously produce control input to vehicles based on their current states and also by minimizing uh, an objective function. This objective function could be mission specific. For example, if I want to go from A to B, I could propose a constant function, which is just uh, the, the distance between, between myself and B and my destination. By minimizing this distance function, we'll get our path planning output. So this objective function to give the key knob to adapt the autonomy for different missions. For example, we could also formulate our safety or security or some constraints there to embed that into the objective function. And so this also gives a way that whether we could you know, manipulate or update or control this objective function by integrate human input. For example, if we have a path planning algorithm, starting point to the goal, if human being found, oh, from the map, there are several obstacles. I want, but a robot does not know. I want a robot to, you know, to avoid these obstacles. And how, we sh how should we integrate this kind of construct of, uh, from a human being to the update uh, objective function? This is actually called objective learning from uh, human, human input. But we never consider human input. We need to take care of the following two challenges. First is sparse. Human operators can usually only give a few of data points or waypoints for the uh, autonomous vehicle to consider. And then usually humans input are in a different time coordinate system from robots. And uh, we actually could mathematically formulate the whole problem. We consider the most general dynamic model of the robot, which is a nonlinear one. And it has a very general uh, object function with a tunable parameter P. And also its trajectory could be produced by auto, uh, optimal control. And also, we also could write out the sparse human inputs in a different time coordinate system. And actually, we could, have found, we could define a time warping function uh, to, to deal with the, the different uh, uh, time scales. And then our goal become the, actually become the uh, optimization problem. And the solution to this optimization problem, we utilize the combination of optimal control and also gradient descent method. And uh, I could show you uh, the two simulations. Actually, if you are interested in the detailed algorithm, you could go to actually uh, my Google Scholar page. You could see there is a paper called uh, uh, Object Learning from Sparse Human Inputs, and uh, which is uploaded in the archive. So here I want to show you two simulation results. One is the control or the motion planning for a drone or quad rotors. The other one is for the robotics arm. And the, even for the quad rotor, you can see you know, we, we, we want the quad rotor to pass these two windows. 
and we will give two waypoints, it already get a very good performance. If we give more five waypoints, it were even better. This is not done by curve fitting because curve fitting can only apply to that specific, specific uh, scenario. You know, can only be applied into when we want to control your uh, vehicle to just follow that trajectory. But for we we want to incorporate this waypoint into our object learning more like a, which can be easily be applied to be a different scenario, but with the same machine object functions. And another example is a two link robot arm with a rich target position by avoiding obstacles. So there's no human guidance. The robots will hit the obstacle. If we only give one point, and then robot could actually pass the target. Pass, uh, avoid obstacle and pass the target. And this is actually our uh, uh, ongoing work on uh, uh, how to integrate a human input into the object learning. And uh, if you are interested, please go to my Go Scholar page to find the paper, Object Learning from Sparse Human Inputs. We have just submitted that to be to actually transaction on robotics. And then this actually uh, a, a brief summary of uh, uh, our, our recent research on resilience for multi-agent consensus, formation control, optimization, and learning, and also how to integrate a sparse human input into safety. And in future, we want to extend this to how to integrate sparse human input into resilience. Uh, besides theoretical work, actually in my lab, we also have uh, uh, developed a very, uh, uh, more like a, a multi-agent test bed consisting of uh, different types of uh, drones or ground vehicle, ground robots. And then you may, you may ask, what is the next? So what is the future vision for ACS, autonomous flight system? So our vision is that we will have AI there, a learning there, advanced AI learning and data analytics. And also we also need to consider human there. So this is actually uh, our ongoing uh, project is we want to develop a AI assisted multi-agent platform, which is able to provide this, this real time distributed environment perception and situation awareness, and also perform real time dynamic and digital control management OSS. And also we will be the platform able to communicate and coordinate with humans and could take human input and also human and also could provide human operator feedback. Of course, we also want the whole system, multi-agent system, to improve the performance and time involved and by employing the rights of machine learning algorithm, especially lifelong learning. Uh, this is the multi-university project uh, led by me, by myself, uh, and uh, with funding supported from Northrop Grumman. And uh, this morning, like we got a three-year funding. And the other two universities we have, University of Texas in Aust and Austin, and the University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, here are the short video and uh, uh, Purdue uh, more demos of our research project. For you may ask, what are the key enablers for future AC as autonomous connected systems? So usually for autonomous connected systems, we will have systems and also connected and also environment. And uh, to achieve autonomous, of course, control optimization will play a central role. And to deal with the connected part, we need the networks and graph theory. And for human input, of course, we need expertise from human in the loop. And also when, whenever it comes to environment, Nowadays, usually we need to consider complex environment, uh, which consists of uncertainty or some unknown part or even hostile 
ones with several attackers. So this will give rise to we need the techniques for robust control and learning integration learning and AI, and also we need to consider resilience. So I would say the key enabler for future ACS will be integration of all of this, or be integration of control optimization networks with uh, learning and data and AI. So for this, I want to uh, also introduce you to a new center launched by uh, college, Purdue College of Engineer. It's a center for innovation in control optimization networks. And the mission is to integrate classical theories in control optimization networks with recent advances in AI, machine learning, and big data to address fundamental challenges in autonomous and connected systems. So the center's focus is actually mainly focused on autonomy. So uh, it is a new center. It's different from a uh, uh, serious center. It's well established for more than 20 years and with a uh, very with a uh, unique strength uh, on cybersecurity research and education. And uh, so this is all my uh, talk. Uh, before ending the talk, I want to thank first to thank my founding agency, Northrop Grumman, uh, two programs, NGCRC and NGC Realm Project, for their reliable funding support, especially like like Neta, either Jim and Hassan and Jason, Carlo and also uh, Paul, Justin and Hong. Of course, I also want to uh, give my sincere thanks to Series. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's through series. Series actually has helped my group in many ways, uh, bridging the connection between our research and also funding agency. Actually, my first grant is through series, and I got my first grant from Nostra Group, eh? NGCRC program. It, it's introduced by uh, series, and also also helping, especially a junior faculty like me, to establish a research program uh, in uh, on cybersecurity. And I especially want to thank Dong Yan, Joe, and Jerry. So if you have any questions on uh, you know, my uh, talk, please feel free to email me. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Xiao Shui. That was outstanding. I, I appreciate the, uh, the time you're able to spend with us today. If anyone has questions, there's a couple of ways you can ask them. You can raise your hand, uh, try to get our attention. We'll turn your microphone on. You can ask your question directly. Or if you'd like, you could uh, go over to the Slack channel and put a, uh, a question in the Slack channel. So are there any questions out there? We'll be happy to handle them. We have a, have a few minutes. I try to control my talk to be within 45 minutes. <laughs> I have some, some time for questions, actually. You did an outstanding job. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any questions. If uh, if there are any, like I said, you should be able to. Uh, oh, they're, they're, your... the chat. they're the chat uh, from. Oh, uh, got some in the chat. Got it. Okay, yeah. I see it. From Camel for localization, how accurate the system uh, should it be? Uh, we we actually uh, also, we didn't actually in these slides we didn't talk about uh, uh, localizations. And I believe the que your question is more regarding to our uh, past findings of the uh, uh, from a human input, I guess. And uh, for the object learning through human input, actually, is more like a uh, should it be real system real robot. It, it's more like a, for object learning from uh, for real robots and uh, from a human input. It actually our uh, requirement for human input could be sparse and don't have to be accurate. And also, we don't actually uh, we, when we implement uh, our uh, multi-agent platform, we don't have a localization there. It we more like uh, each robot is only for the for for machine control. It's only based on their local measurement, or it's only based on the relative distance between it, it itself and its nearby neighbors. I hope that addresses your question. Thank you. And of all the uh, algorithms we talk about here is what we call a distributive. I mean, there's no global coordinator. They have no GPS. So each agent, there, each agent has no uh, access to any global information. So everything is, is made by locally and by agent itself, only based on its information of itself 
and also its information about its nearby neighbors. So that's actually what we call the distributed. It's uh, uh, the fundamental requirement for control optimization learning whenever, whenever we come to coordinate a large scale of autonomous vehicles. Okay, great. Anything else out there we can, uh, we can answer for you on, on this presentation? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Thanks, Joshua. Thank you.